I'm Karen Cash and I'm CEO of Tech Alpharetta. Welcome to our podcast series, Driving Innovation, where we explore the people and companies that are driving innovation in the city of Alpharetta. And we have with us here today, Jagruti Solanki, who is CFO of BitPay, based here in Alpharetta. Jagruti, welcome. Thank you for having me here, Karen. It's yes. my honor. Yes, it's great to have you here. Um, and I'm really excited to have you share with us today your, your journey to becoming a um, what, who you are today as a tech thought leader in blockchain and, and in the cryptocurrency space. So I thought we, maybe we could start off by just hearing a little bit about the early days. You started out um, as an, with, a, with an Atlanta accounting firm in the audit space, is that right? That is correct, yep. So about uh, 2007 is when I joined uh, as an auditor uh, at Aprio. It's uh, one of the top 50 CPA firms yes. uh, headquartered in Atlanta. Uh, that was uh, around a year after uh, I came to the United States. So, yeah, my journey began uh, as an auditor. <laughs> okay, and you came to the United States from India? Yes, I came here uh, to the U.S. in 2006 uh, for my MBA uh, and uh, went straight to Iowa, actually, to do my MBA. And, uh, so, again, born in India, I was raised in Oman, uh, came to Iowa from Oman. Uh, eight months into my MBA program, uh, I got an opportunity to do internship in a CPA firm uh, here in the U.S. And uh, I decided to go with uh, Miller Ray Hauser, uh, which uh, back then uh, was a 30-people CPA firm. Uh, it was acquired by Aprio a few months after I joined okay. uh, Miller Ray Hauser. So that's really kind of where uh, my journey began. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, talking about uh, it started from Iowa, and, and then I landed in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, having done your undergraduate schooling in um, in Oman, you said? Y yes. So uh, pretty much all my schooling was in uh, Oman, although undergrad I did in India, and then uh, went back to Oman uh, for the rest of my uh, you know, rest of my curriculum. Okay, and so was that an adjustment um, for you at all, um, going into sort of big corporate in the United States um, from a cultural standpoint at all? Yeah, uh, actually a massive adjustment. Uh, so growing up in Oman, you know, minority, uh, you know, to begin with, and uh, pr the entire, I would say my entire life in Oman, the, the one thing that, you know, we did well was we studied and we studied and we studied and uh, a lot of education and uh, that was about it. Uh, uh, and then, uh, you know, the culture there in Oman and even in India is, is much different, I would say, uh, from, uh, from outside of, uh, you know, Asian country, from outside Asia. Uh, and so when I came here uh, to the U.S., uh, th there was a lot I had to change on a personal front, uh, my communication style, my interaction. Uh, my level of confidence, which uh, back then did not exist, uh, it was <laughs> probably running in a negative balance. Uh, so I had to work a lot on my personal front uh, to be able to uh, adjust uh, to the corporate environment here. Uh, so yeah, it was, uh, you know, it took a while. I will say it took a couple of years to uh, kind of, uh, you know, catch up to how I should have uh, when I started my corporate career here. Okay. And uh, you focused on auditing, uh, the auditing sector during your entire career at Aprio? Yeah, so I was with Aprio about 12 years, uh, and uh, I would say probably first half my career, I focused more on a lot of different industries. So I did non-for-profits, I did hedge funds, I did uh, you know, professional services, I did some manufacturing company audits, a lot of uh, audits within different industry sectors. Uh, the latter half, uh, which was the uh, last six years almost, uh, I started focusing more on technology companies. And within tech companies, I would say software, uh, fintech, SaaS, and, uh, and then blockchain uh, kind mm -hmm. of got thrown into that mix. Uh, but focusing more on tech companies, uh, on audit side, uh, I kind of ventured out into uh, financial reporting, uh, accounting aspects, a lot of complicated accounting matters that... Uh, technology companies deal with. So I kind of right. dabbled a lot in that space too. Mm -hmm. And was that by choice that you started to move more towards working with technology companies? Yeah, very much by choice. Yeah, I, I realized when I did my first tech company audit that this is really interesting. It's challenging. It's not easy. Uh, you know, there's no checklist that I can be put in. I almost have to create a checklist to kind of 
learn the business and, and then you know design one to finish the work, so to speak. And I really enjoyed doing that. Uh, so yes, very much by choice that I ended up picking technology and just went deep into it uh, from when I started there. And at some point you became aware of the, the beginnings of blockchain. Um, tell us about how you, you became interested in blockchain. Yeah, uh, well, funny story. So uh, back in 2014, um, BitPay, uh, who I'm with now, uh, they uh, reached out to Aprio uh, for a financial statement audit, and, and we started working with uh, BitPay back then uh, uh, you know, through, through uh, audit and other services that Aprio was providing. And um, I asked, actually, I asked my su supervisors that I would love to be on this account because I don't understand what blockchain is. I don't understand what crypto is or Bitcoin is. And it's very interesting. I just, I just want to be on this account and I'll just learn and, you know, I, ju I just want to be on it. And uh, that's really how my journey began. It was with BitPay uh, back in 2014. Uh, I learned a lot uh, working on uh, the audit, uh, working, you know, learning from the company and the people at the company. And uh, since then, uh, I would say, you know, Aprio, we kind of, uh, kind of helped uh, build uh, Aprio's blockchain practice. And, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Talk mm -hmm. about that for a moment, though, because yeah. that, that's so fascinating that, you know, it was early days for blockchain. I imagine there weren't many accounting firms in town that were developing a blockchain practice when you and your your partner at Aprio decided to go after that and, and set up a, a blockchain practice, right? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, back then, uh, crypto was, you know, uh, it's something that, you know, many people did not want to hear about or did not hear about, right? It was just supposed to be, I mean, I guess back then it was just not as adopted as it is now. Uh, and uh, e even today, uh, from a regulatory standpoint, uh, there's not a whole lot of, uh, evolution. I mean, yes, there are good updates. There's a lot has changed in the past, you know, ten years or so. But it's uh, it, it's evolving. And and back then, uh, no accounting standards, no tax clarifications, uh, or not as much as we would like uh, to see. Uh, auditing standards were still not necessarily as adopted to you know anything cryptocurrency, blockchain, or digital assets, uh, which is still the case. Although there have been a lot more developments in the sense of uh, institutions right. getting together and putting some thought leadership out there. So a lot more clarity for sure. But back then, uh, yeah, we were one of the first few who uh, could even do any work uh, from a CPA st service standpoint to a blockchain company. Right. And uh, so you and your your business partner at Aprio decided you'd develop this practice. So how did you how did you get up to speed on this and, and uh, teach yourselves really how to, how to work with blockchain and, and in the cryptocurrency space? What, what, what were some of the strategies that, that you undertook or, or things that you um, immersed yourselves in to learn? Yeah, great question. Um, I think uh, one of the key things was you need to have passion uh, for the new space, new industry and emerging technology. And uh, without passion, it's hard to invest your time in, into something that, you know, you're not that interested, right? So, uh, you know, myself, you know, a couple of the partners at Aprio, uh, we all realize soon enough that this is, this space is here to stay and it's, it's just going to evolve from here, right? So we invested a significant amount of time learning the space, uh, being out there, uh, one, learning ourselves and then kind of uh, figuring out what proper, um, I would say, guidelines would be or what best practices are uh, for companies and individuals to uh, consider accounting impact of cryptocurrencies or tax implications and kind of designed all of that. Uh, working with the company uh, and again spending a lot of uh, time uh, learning it ourselves before uh, we could formulate any kind of uh, practice aid or best practices so to speak so right. I, I would say you know passion combined with uh, personal time to learn and study uh, uh, and be in the space uh, like real time almost uh, I think that was that's that's a key to success. And so um, I, I guess there was also a great willingness on, on your part to sort of step outside your comfort zone then on what you already knew and had learned yeah. to not only learn a whole new area, but to help actually develop some, some guidelines and, and appropriate practices yeah, in no, that area. I, yeah, absolutely. In, in fact, uh, outside of uh, working with clients in, in the space and advising them, helping them on you know everything accounting and finance and tax, uh, 
we and uh, I also spent a lot of time uh, kind of working with universities, institutions uh, like AICPA, for example. Uh, you know, we are working with AICPA right now in the task force uh, to uh, uh, contribute from a thought leadership standpoint on what we are seeing, what I'm seeing uh, in the space, or what I'm hearing from companies in terms of challenges they have as they are doing more uh, in the crypto assets and uh, blockchain space. So, you know, I kind of look at this as a two-way uh, process. You know, we educate the regulatory bodies and, you know, they come out with uh, guidance and clarifications that uh, that makes sense, uh, you know, from a practical aspect standpoint. Right, right. So, so you've really become one of the experts that some of those bodies would consult um, to get input as they come up with some of the rules and clarifications? Yeah, I would like to think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so agencies like the IRS or um, the SEC, for example, have they started offering any clarifications um, in this subject matter area? Yeah, uh, IRS has, in fact, since uh, I believe 2014 was the first time when they came out with a clarification on one of the key aspects of uh, digital asset or cryptocurrency uh, tax. Uh, but since then, there are a lot more uh, clarifications. I wouldn't call them authoritative guidance uh, just yet, but right. clarifications based on what they are seeing uh, companies or individuals uh, kind of do uh, more frequently over years. So I think a significant development from that side. Um, SEC, PCOB, uh, FASB, they are all kind of working uh, with AICPA, you know, in a way, you know, as I said, like AICPA has a digital asset task force right. uh, for audit and accounting of digital assets, uh, where the group is working closely with FASB, SEC, PCOB, uh, in, in, in practice aids, in building practice aids uh, and giving more clarifications to CPAs in this space and also uh, non-CPAs, uh, you know, companies who, who can actually use some of this guidance. Which is great progress. Mm -hmm. um, so I know for companies like um, BitPay, it doesn't feel like you know blockchain and cryptocurrency are are in their infancy. But from a regulatory standpoint, um, these are still very early days. Yeah, um, yeah, in this area. Yeah, no, very much. I mean, I would say uh, there's still a lot that is evolving and probably a lot more coming hopefully soon, right? right? Uh, some good changes, some not good changes from a regulatory standpoint. But that said, I feel like any change is great because, you know, that just means that uh, they are paying attention to the space and right. it, it, it's it's here. So, you know, it needs to be addressed. And, uh, you know, to me, I look at any change as a, as a sign of a positive, uh, you know, things moving in a positive direction. Right, and, and in your opinion then, the um, the digital assets, the cryptocurrency, the blockchain, that that's here to stay. Yeah, it's, I think it's so. not a yeah, passing Absolutely. Path. Yeah, no, it's it's here, it's been here, uh, and then just more I would say probably it'll just get more sophisticated as uh, you know, as the industry matures even more. So having worked for BitPay uh, for a number of years as as outside auditor, um, how did it come about that you went to work for BitPay and became their CFO? Yeah, uh, so I've worked with BitPay for a long time and, you know, I've known the founders for a while, uh, obviously in my previous capacity as uh, as, as their auditor and, uh, you know, uh, over years I advised on some technical accounting matters and, uh, and then I guess things just lined up and then last year uh, I decided uh, that, uh, you know, I'm ready to kind of look at blockchain and digital asset from industry side. Uh, looked at it from an auditor or a right. CPA angle for a long time, and uh, I was ready to kind of uh, look at it from the other side and connect all dots. Like to me, uh, at BitPay, what I'm getting to do now is uh, more than just accounting finance, right? I'm, I'm right. getting to see the operational side, you know, be part of strategy and uh, just kind of connect dots from uh, just, you know, like a 360 degree view. So I like that. Yeah, to be part of the overall business yeah, exactly, and business strategy exactly. is, is a tremendous opportunity. And BitPay is headquartered here in Alpharetta. It is, yes. yes. Moved here a few years back. Yes, and it's been around, what, 10 years now? Actually, 10th, um, yeah. Founded? So we had a 10th year anniversary uh, in June last okay. month. Yep, yes, so. that, that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank and, you. Um, how many employees, I, I know uh, BitPay is all remote currently, right? But how many employees overall does BitPay have? Uh, as of today, I think we are about 80 uh, globally. Uh, so yeah, 80 plus. That's fantastic. And of the 80 plus, do you um, know how many are, are here in the Alfreda area? 
Um, I would say probably roughly about 70% mm -hmm. in Atlanta area, not necessarily right. just in Alpharetta, but you know, j just, just here uh, locally. Uh, remaining 30% is kind of decentralized in a way. <laughs> right, right. No, that, that's fantastic. I, I remember when BitPay moved out here from Atlanta um, many years ago and uh, you know, that was that was a really big development to, yeah. to see a, a startup leaving the Atlanta startup scene to um, put down roots here and headquarter here in Alpharetta. And it's been it's been fabulous to watch them grow. So um, excited that, that you're part of the team now. And um, thanks for sharing with us here today about your your journey from uh, auditing practice inside of an accounting firm to being one of the the renowned thought leaders in the blockchain and cryptocurrency fields. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me on, Karen. I really appreciate it. Thanks.